Dude, how cool is Doctor Strange? He's like the guardian of all reality, keeping us safe from nightmarish evil gods and interdimensional demons. With all the monsters, ghosts and paranormal powers, Stephen Strange's very spooky life makes him perfect for a Halloween style showcase. In my mind, there's no better Strange story than Marvel Premiere Issues 4 to I think 10. Starting with the spawn of Sligoth, Strange takes on a Lovecraft-like town infested with nightmares under the control of an otherworldly mastermind. But that story is very dramatic and long as hell, so I'll do it another time. Instead, let's have some Halloween fun. Things are about to get very hairy for Doctor Strange and his good buddy, the amazing Spider-Man. In Marvel Team-Up issues 80 and 81, a sorcerer possessed. Our hero, Peter Parker, has had a lovely night on the town with his love interest, Sissy Ironwood. What do you mean, who's Sissy Ironwood? Let me explain. See, there used to be a time when Peter Parker was slaying it with the ladies, mate. He wasn't always this loser. Sissy. Deborah Whitman, she liked him so much it drove her insane. Them three girls next door, Candy, Randy and Bambi, they were all thirsty for Pete. One of them was literally called Randy for Christ's sake. So Pete's walking his date home when they're suddenly attacked out of nowhere by an honest to god werewolf. Even Peter's proportionate spider strength doesn't stop this monster. His date legs it to find help, but it might be too late already, as puny Parker goes down hard. Not even a bullet puts down this beast. It seems dead set on chewing on Sissy. But Peter's not done yet. Secret identity be damned. He won't let someone get hurt because he failed to act. But it's Peter getting hurt now, innit? His superpowers pale compared to the killer canine. But where Braun fails, Brain succeeds. Strategy mate, he splatters a bunch of webbing to the wolf's fairy face, driving it away. But that's not even the weirdest thing to happen tonight, as Peter stumbles across the eye of Agamotto in the aftermath. What is Doctor Strange's favourite fashion accessory doing in a Central Park pond? Once the werewolf's victims are safe in hospital, Spider-Man makes a house call. But instead of Doctor Strange, he finds the doc's partner clear and she's acting very suspicious, and her clothes are very tight. I can see her belly button from here. Strange is indisposed, and that's the most Spidey gets out of her before the door is slammed in his face. It hasn't actually been that long since Spidey and Strange last teamed up, where they battled the Silver Dagger to free Clear. Though to defeat the dagger, Strange had to use magic from a demonic spellbook. Could the Doc now be paying the price for reading the forbidden text? This mystery must be really getting to Peter because he stoops so low as to ask a fortune teller what to do next. And the cards spell disaster for Stephen Strange. Spidey stakes out Strange's Sanctum Sanctorum, say that five times fast, and finally lays eyes upon Stephen himself and he looks fine. No sharp teeth or wagon tail. But when Strange finds clear, he goes berserk. Bit of a domestic on Bleecker Street, so Spider-Man jumps in. Strange certainly isn't acting himself, and that plays to Peter's favour. He catches the Sorcerer Supreme off guard and, after a brief punch-up, Strange is KO'd. The Eye of Agamotto reveals the truth to the heroes. That werewolf was indeed Doctor Strange, cursed by the evil magic he had used to rescue Clear from Silver Dagger paying the price for heroism. The good guy's plan is a bit, well, strange. Spidey and Wong, loyal Wong, take Steven on an airplane, planning to chase the sun to avoid any full moons, but they're a bit too slow. The now shaggy Sorcerer Supreme runs wild and causes the plane to crash before it ever takes off. Now this woofing warlock is on the loose, can anyone stop the rampage of Where Strange? Is there any hope of saving the man within the monster? Just one. Satana, daughter of the devil. 
What a great page this is, Marvel really outdone themselves here. Zoom in on Clear's ass and then fade out. And then fade back into issue 81. Spider-Man and Redhead's name, a better duo. Mary Jane, Matt Murdock, and now this hottie. Satana and Clear use the orb to determine where the wild strange could be. But four heads are better than two, so they teleport Spiny and Wong back home to make a plan of action. Between Clear and Satana, I can't tell who's got the stupider hair, but I can tell you that this whole werewolf caper is bigger than it initially seemed. The entire Silver Dagger plot was part of a bigger plan to claim the soul of Stephen Strange, and as soon as he tastes human blood, the game is over. Despite being literally Satan's daughter, Satana is Strange's only hope, so the gang have got no choice but to listen. Though something tells me Spidey's probably more focused on something besides a voice. While she combats Strange's magic, Spidey's got a handle as muscle. Satana senses Strange's aura and teleports Spider-Man to a Manhattan hospital where the Doc plans to finish making a meal of sissy ironwood. Spidey scraps with Where Strange until a good solid swing kick and lots of lucky hits finally knock the Doc down. Physician, heal. The battle of the flesh is won, but the battle of the soul won't be nearly as easy. Through Satana's dark ritual, she, Spider-Man, and Doctor Strange. Hmm. Demons! Demons of the Astral Plane lay siege on Satana as she ventures to restore the soul of Doc Strange. The pawns of darkness rain down upon the Devil's Daughter relentlessly. These hordes of evil overwhelm Satana, but even a being born of evil like herself understands and respects the heroism of the Sorcerer Supreme. So to claim back Stephen's soul, she unleashes her ultimate spell, one so powerful it drains her of all the demonic powers and her life. Satana dies so that Strange may live. And though Spider-Man doesn't understand why a demon-born sorceress would sacrifice herself for a mortal, Strange muses that perhaps the daughter of the devil was more human than she seemed. Dude, werewolves, Satanism, this was spookier than I signed up for. This read like a Hammer horror movie but with extra cheesecake. Wolf Strange was cool as hell despite how goofy the fuzzy face looked in Strange's costume and cloak. Marvel Team Up gets overlooked a bit because it's a bunch of one-off stories, unlike Amazing and Spectacular, that tell ongoing stories. But I had a lot of fun with this one. Even the fight scenes were great, especially when Spidey used the momentum from where Strange's throw to hammer back into him. Sick mate. Spidey and Strange make such weird yet cool partners. They're so different in style and function, yet they go together so well. Even the movies seem to think so. I think that might be why they're so good together though, because it's not a team up you'd think of right away, and it always leads to interesting scenarios. B -b -b bonus story for you as well mate, while we're on the topic of Doctor Strange, I want to show off this cool quasi crossover. Sometimes if a company doesn't have the rights to a character, they'll just make a similar character that they can call their own and use that instead. And that's how Marvel got away with publishing this bad boy. From Marvel Comics Presents issue 79. Welcome to a nightmare on Bleecker Street. Welcome to prime time, bitch. Doc Strange's assistant Sarah has taken him out for a dodgy team building exercise. A viewing of a sleepless night on Sequoia Street, starring Eddie Kruger. But despite the gore and horror, it's just a movie. Right? Strange awakens to screams and a cold sweat, and fearfully finds both Secretary Sarah and Loyal Wong have had their throats slashed. He's your boyfriend now, Strange. Eddie lives. The monster from the movie has manifested in reality. Not even the goddamn crimson bands of Satorak combined to the nightmare fueled fiend. Since when does the Doc have to rhyme to use his magic? It's not Wizards of Waverly Place. Also, he's invoked the name of Dormammu in this one. Surely that's against the rules for Sorcerer Supreme. Nothing strange does has any effect on Eddie. It's impossible. It can't be true. It's a nightmare. Ah, 
Of course. Nightmare. Stranger's cunning mind pieces together the truth as he unmasks the villain as Stranger's old foe, Nightmare. Using the scary movie as a backdrop for his subconscious assaults on Strange, the villain crawls back to his circle of hell, and Strange sees that his friends still sleep soundly, though he might have some trouble doing so himself. A lot of horror icons would be cool villains for Doctor Strange, but the Nightmare on Elm Street movies are some of my favourites, so I'm glad that they chose Freddy. Imagine the Doc trying to banish Jason from Camp Crystal Lake, or hunting Chucky through a toy store, or... Doctor Strange and Wong battling the killer clowns from outer space. But a supernatural serial killer who attacks you in your dreams sounds like a great Strange or Moon Knight foe. Give us an outro, Freddy. Told ya! Comic books was bad for ya! <laughs>